In this video, we're going to look at multiple choice questions in the all new Adobe Captivate. So hopefully this video will be a nice deep dive into multiple choice question slides. Because of course, when I first looked at the question slide, specifically the multiple choice question slide in the all new Adobe Captivate, I thought, Eh, it's pretty basic. There's not a lot of customization, but once you actually get in there and start to play around with some of the properties for the question slides and some of the appearance settings that you can change for not just the slide itself, but many of the individual objects, start to realize that's actually pretty customizable. Let's take a look. To add a multiple choice question to your all new Adobe Captivate project, just click on the new slide icon in your toolbar. Down at the bottom are all your question slides. In this case, we'll select multiple choice to add a multiple choice question here. Probably the first thing you're gonna do is maybe a little bit of configuration to make sure that it's set up to receive your content properly. In my case here, I have a single answer, multiple choice that I'm planning, but I need four answers. So I'm gonna click on the answer options underneath question properties and make sure that there are four options for me to populate. I'm gonna just type in my question stem here now and now just populate the answers. Okay, so I'm just gonna click away so that I've got the entire multiple choice block selected. Uh, just like any block in Adobe Captivate, it is made up of components and you can see them down here. Before we get into the individual components, appearance and reporting, let's take a look at some basic question properties as well as design options that are available. So first and foremost are the alignment and spacing. This is something that I would typically change to be a little bit wider. I'm always sort of thinking, what is this gonna look like on a mobile phone? So I don't want too much space on either side. Uh, otherwise I run the risk of words, you know, not showing completely and wrapping partway through a word and so on. So uh, I like to give it plenty of space and minimize the horizontal padding on a slide like this. There are two essential types of slide types. There's graded, which is the default question type. Graded simply means that there is a score associated with this slide. The knowledge check version of this is exactly the same in many ways, except of course, you will have no score associated with it. Knowledge checks are great for practice questions that are maybe at the end of a lesson or a topic, and you just wanna give learners an opportunity to practice their knowledge or skills that they've just learned. I'm gonna stick with graded for right now. Now, within multiple choice questions, there are essentially two types that you can have. You can have a multiple choice question where there is a single answer out of all the four answers here, or maybe two or more answers contribute to a correct answer. And that's when you would select multiple answers. Now, when you select multiple answers, you're going to need to let Captivate know what those answers are that contribute to the correct answer. So you would use the select answer button right here. And once you do that, you can select, of course, the answers that make up that correct answer and then press done. I'm actually not using multiple answers in this case, so I'm gonna unselect multiple answers. I would either select or edit the answer at this point, I can do that. And the correct answer in this case is in fact, Charles III, he's the head of state for Canada. I'll click on done. And now I'm ready to further customize these question properties. One thing you can do, which I'm a big fan of, is that you can shuffle your answers so that Charles III doesn't show up as the second answer every single time you take the course or every single time that any user accesses the course, you can click this little shuffle answers icon. It'll turn blue to let you know that it's been activated. So when we preview this later, you won't necessarily see these answers in the order that you see here. 
In addition, you can number your answers. Because I've got shuffle turned on, I'm not really a big fan of numbering because Charles III won't always be answer two or answer B. But if your organization does that, you can select numbering and then you can choose the style of numbering that you use, either numbers or letters and with various different punctuation after it. In this case here, this is a set up essentially as a final quiz question. So I'm probably only going to give my learners a single try at getting this answer correctly. Uh, if they fail the quiz, you know, maybe I'll give them a chance to take the course over again. But if I was to give them, let's say four tries, they could simply guess until they got it right. So I generally don't do that. But you can choose any of these options here. Custom if you need another number like 27 or something like that. Or you can provide them unlimited attempts. By default, a graded question has 10 points assigned to it, but you can override that with one of the options here or a custom score of your choosing by selecting custom and typing in the number. You can even penalize your learner for getting a wrong answer. So if they've accumulated, let's say 30 points with the quiz so far, you can actually deduct a point or two or five, whatever, uh, if they get this particular question wrong. And again, you have choices like five, 10, 15, or any custom number that you wish. There is the option to set a time limit for this question. It can, the default is 60 seconds, but you could make it 30, you could make it a minute and a half. Generally, I don't add time limits to question slides unless there is a time limit that exists in real life. So if we're teaching learners how to smack widgets in the factory and they only have 30 seconds to smack each widget, then perhaps we would put a time limit if this question was about smacking widgets in the factory. Now, from there, we can start to customize the appearance of our slide. Now, Adobe has provided us with these five basic design options for this slide which at first you might think is not very many choices, but don't worry too much about that because I've discovered that there's quite a bit of customization that you can do even once you've made these selections here. Further down in the components, we can turn on and off various opponents and change the appearance of not only the slide, but the individual objects as well. So for example, if I select one of my answers, you can see that there are a bunch of design options just for answers as well. Let's go back to the whole slide view. And I'm gonna start with this one here because in this example, I actually have some pictures of the various people that are potentially the correct or incorrect answers for this question. So I can add those images by selecting this layout here. Now, at first glance, you might think, well, this is not at all like what I would choose. Again, don't worry. There's quite a bit of customization that we can do. Let's start with selecting each of these characters here, going down to appearance and going over to image. And we'll click on the folder icon to select a new image or a first image in this case for Pierre Polyov. Next, we'll do Charles III. And then we'll choose Mary Simon. And finally, Justin Trudeau. Now we can also customize the appearance of the checkbox or radio icon here. If we wish to use a solid color like white and then have maybe a darker outline around the border, we can certainly choose that and really, you know, accentuate that checkbox there. In addition, we can change the text. If we don't particularly care for Georgia, we could replace Georgia with a different font, such as Arial, and that will change all of them at once. And we can choose um, larger images or smaller images for any of these here. I kind of like the, the large there giving us two by two which is, I think, a good design layout here. Now, one of the things to remember about our answers is that these images, which are our answers, have 
rollover and down states and selected states and so on. So if we select those, you'll see there's this section for states and a show button next to it. Let's click that and we can see that we have different effects on these different states. So for the hover uh, under image, we have a thing called overlay color. And this is where when you move your mouse over it, it changes the appearance of that uh, image. I'm not really a fan of this, so I'm gonna turn that off for all of these states actually including disabled and for selected maybe we can do something interesting with the magnification so when we select them we'll get a close-up of their face here that'll give us a visual cue that we have selected one of the answers let's go ahead and hide the different uh, image effects here we can also do some further customization to the question slide itself Maybe I want, uh, I don't want this card approach here. So I could unselect that. That's going to allow the background to show through. And perhaps I even want to change that background. So I could select a completely different image. In this case, I could select something from the asset store that might be very appropriate for a slide like this, or maybe that's too busy. So we'll choose maybe just a solid background and keep it simple but there are a lot of choices available for you. In addition, within our components, we can add a skip button, a clear button, and a back button. And if you click on these, like any other object within this slide, you can customize their appearance as well. So maybe I want all black buttons for these particular buttons here. One of the things I really like about Adobe Captivate 12 is the ability to add icons to buttons. So if I select the icon tab in appearance with one of the buttons selected, choose the icon option, and you can see that I can click on this folder icon and select an icon from the assets store here that is appropriate maybe for a back button. And of course you can choose the color for that icon since it's an SVG and that looks kind of cool. Now, one of the things you might be wondering about is in previous versions of Adobe Captivate, there was a very obvious feedback caption visible on your question slides. And you can see here that there really isn't anything like that. It's actually hidden. It's one of the components of a question slide. You can't disable them, but you can show these feedback captions. By default, they show at the top now, I think this is great that the top is available, but I think in this case, I might want this at the bottom of the slide because I just hit the submit button. So in all likelihood, that's where I'm scrolled to on a page, especially if I'm on a mobile browser, I'm way down here. So uh, you can change the position of the feedback. And if I select the feedback caption, you'll notice that the inbuilt states, it's really just a single object that has a default state of transparent and of course a correct state, an incorrect state, and an incomplete state. And if you'd like these to have a little bit more impact than what they do, personally I'd recommend that you take the green color away, especially the green and the red for the uh, correct and incorrect because if someone were colorblind, the red and green would have very little meaning for them. And you can go to the text tab in appearance and select a new appearance for those that maybe pops out a little bit more. So I'm going to do that for all of these and select heading nine where it's nice and large text. But anyone who says that you can't customize the appearance of the all new Adobe Captivate really hasn't done a deep dive like I've done here. And you know, there's more things to cover as well. So I'm pretty happy with the way that this has been customized here. Let's preview it on our desktop first. Okay, I'm gonna move my play bar to the upper right hand corner here and collapse it so it's out of the way. So who is this head of state of Canada? And it is in fact, so we got this rollover effect here where it just kind of zooms in a bit. I'm going to select Charles the first. 
Mm, I probably don't want to go that far of a zoom. I could correct that, of course. And then we go ahead and press submit and it says that's correct. Click anywhere or press Y to continue. Again, one of the cool features of Adobe Captivate is the ability to preview your slides like this on your mobile device. So let's do that right now. To do that, I just click on the three dots here and generate a device preview. I open up my phone, in this case an iPhone 11, to the camera app and point the camera at this QR code and select open in Chrome or open in your browser. And here we go. So I've moved my play bar to the upper right hand corner here and I can scroll down, scroll up. We'll select uh, Charles III here again, scroll down, press submit. That's correct. Click anywhere or press Y to continue. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.